at the same time. They're at the same place at the same time. Same place at the same time. Which one's particle A? We have A is going to be x of t is 4t minus 4. And what's y of t? 2t minus k. And what's b? What is it? x of t is 3t. And y of t is t squared minus 2t minus 1. Nice. So it says if k equals 5, do they ever collide? So let's just plug in 5 right here. So they have to be at the same place at the same time. So what should you do? What, what should you do? They have to be at the same place at the same time, yeah? Set what equal to each other? Uh, so set the y's equal to each other. Okay, so hold on. Let's do one thing at a time. So which one do you want to set first? X. Let's do X. Why are you doing X first? That's a, I would do X first. Because it's easier. Yes. So you end up with T is equal to 4. Correct? Yeah. Right? So the only time the X coordinates are the same is when time equals what? 4. four. So what should you do with that time equals 4? Plug it into y's, right? So y of t right here is going to, so not y of t, y of what? 4 is going to be 8 minus 5, which is 3. And over here, you have y of 4 is 16 minus 8 minus 1. Is that correct? Yeah. So you end up with what? 7. Do they ever collide? No. No collision. Nice. Awesome. The right side is always going to be what? 7, Seven right? Oh, so Correct? At, so seven. 2 times 4 minus k has to equal what? 7. seven. Yes. Correct. So what does k have to be? 1. one. The right hand side. So what do you have to do to both of these? You find the magnitude of each of these, right? So you have to do the derivatives, right? And then you square them and then you add them together. So what do you end up with here? You end up with 16 plus what? I think it's 16 plus 4, right? So this one's, that's kind of cool. Square root of 20. Nice. And what's nice about that is, does it matter what time it is? What's the speed of this thing always going to be? Radical 20. It's kind of cool. Okay. What about this one? 9 plus 2t minus 2 squared, like this? Correct? So what do we plug in for t? 4. So you have the square root of 9 plus 8 minus 6 squared. Is that correct? Yeah, so this is going to be the square root of 45. So which one's moving faster? That one. I can replace, oh wait, yeah, place 28 and not Well, yeah, you're just messing around. I like this. X, I love that. Good job, Kevin. X minus 2 is equal to cosine t, right? And what does y equal? Cosine squared. Oh, so what could you do to both sides? X minus 2 squared is equal to what? Cosine squared t. So what can you do now? Oh look, there's cosine. So what do we have here? Y equals what? What does Y equal? That was really like. So you know this goes from one to negative one. Well, negative one to one like this. So what's the smallest x value? So x is contained in what? One to what? One to three. Exactly. One to three. So this is for the domain x between one and three. That's what it looks like. It can't do all of it. You can't make x arbitrarily large, therefore you can't make y arbitrarily large. Just be careful. You do it out the Cartesian method. You know that t is equal to x over 3. So we know that y is equal to cosine of what? 2x over 3. So what does y prime equal? Negative 2 thirds sine of what? 2 thirds x, like that. So what does y double prime equal? Um, Negative 4 over 9. Yeah, cosine. cosine of what? Yeah. 2 thirds x, like that. And then it's when, oh, when t equals 2. So what do you have to do to, before you can plug in here? Don't you just plug t back in? So yeah, t, t equals 2 into there. So, x, so when t equals 2, what does that mean? What coordinate are you at? Uh, x equals 6. Six. And this doesn't really matter. You just want the x value, right? right? You just want the x value. So where do you plug that? You plug the x value in. So you get y double prime at at x equals 6 is going to be equal to negative 4 ninths cosine of what? Hmm? 4. 4. Yes.
Correct. So there's your answer right there. So that would be correct. So what is that going to be? dy dt over dx dt. Do you remember that? We talked about it's going to be in this case. What is dy dt? What's dy dt? Yeah, so you do d dt is going to of what? Negative what? Yeah. 2 sine of 2t. Two two. And what's it over? Two. It's just over what? 3. Yes. So what is d dt of that right there? Uh, negative what? Yeah, negative, negative 4 thirds yep. cosine of yeah, 2t, exactly. So that right there, what we just found, same exact thing? Yeah. Yes. The key thing is, the reason they write it like this, it's a lot easier to write it when you don't have to write this like compound cube fraction now. But this is important because it is not always going to be easy to unparameterize a function. Some parametric equations, here's the thing. Cartesian equations, we generally like them when they're in function form, correct? But what can parametric equations do? Can they double back on themselves? Can they make little loops? Can they do all sorts of crazy stuff? So basically, I'll put it this way. Let's say you let's say you plotted a parametric equation and it like looked like this, you know, something weird, right? And then I said, what's the Cartesian function? What's the Cartesian function that approx that that is that? What would you say? I'm gonna firmly stay in parametric land. There are parametrics that are really hard, really hard to write in Cartesian form. So if I ever ask you to find the second derivative, use that. this if you can. Use this if you can. This by default will be easier. So let's go back to part B. What's another way to test to see? I mean, we did it right here. Uh, this was a maximum, right? What's another way to test to see if something's a maximum? You use this right here, correct? Yeah. That was a sine graph, right? What's another way to test to see if something is a maximum? Testing whether it's concave up or down. So using the what? Second derivative. Using the second derivative. So you can use the second derivative. Yes. Okay. It is now.